Typically dying in a video game is the last thing you ever want to happen while playing, but, but, sometimes we get ourselves into such awful situations that we just can't help but think that killing our character would just be easier. It's an easier path. What is up, guys? Jimmy or Chaos. Welcome to Chaos Top 10s, and today, we're gonna be counting down 10 times in video games where you, the gamer, the player, the one that's in control, would rather die then go on. Let's get started. To kick off this list at number 10, let's start when you're out of ammo with a ton of bad guys left to get rid of. That's right, this scenario I'm sure plenty of you have been in before, probably everybody. In just about every shooter game that's out there, both online and offline, there is going to be some kind of ammo mechanic that keeps you from just spraying and praying forever. But there are a few things worse than going into a fight with full ammo, taking out a whole bunch of enemies, and then realizing that you're totally out of ammo with a bunch of enemies still left. If you have ever played Resident Evil 4, this is probably the single worst thing that can happen to you in the game. At that point, many of us will just throw in the towel and kill ourselves to try again and get our ammo back. And if you go all the way back to the original Resident Evil, I don't think there was a game where ammunition and bullets were as important as it was in there. At number nine, when you get charged by an enemy that is way higher level than you are. This is a pretty common thing that happens in open world RPGs like The Witcher 3. In most all RPGs, there is a leveling system that gives you some kind of understanding of where your character is in reference to the enemies that you will be fighting, leading to the certain parts of the map being marked as higher level since that is where the stronger enemies are. And for the most part, they're telling you to stay away from those. But in most RPGs, those strong enemies won't be restricted to the strong areas. And every once in a while, you'll just be strolling around town and see an enemy way stronger than you actually come at you with a license to kill. At that point, you have to weigh your options. Do you waste a ton of health and equipment trying to kill this thing, or do you just take the bullet and reload your last save? Most of the time, it's going to be the second option. You let me know in the comment section which person are you. At number eight, when you are lagging like crazy. Lag is definitely one of the worst things about multiplayer games, and regardless of what game you're playing or what terrible times or things are happening around you, if you're lagging, that is going to be the worst thing ever. I'm sure we've all had those moments where we start lagging, then we decide that we're going to try and play it out, and then we later admit that that was probably wrong. We admit defeat, and we just stop trying. There are plenty of reasons for bad lag, be it on your end or on the server's end, but whatever the reason may be, it absolutely sucks and has probably led millions of players just offing their character over the years, especially in games like Call of Duty where they still somehow have not figured out how to have consistent connections. Lag sucks. At number seven, strolling in or walking into the boss room with no health. In most video game campaigns, you can kind of tell when you're about to fight a boss. You'll walk into a room and there'll be a ton of open space or maybe some very strangely placed set pieces. You gotta tell, you just, you get the vibe that you're about to get into a boss fight within the next few seconds. But when it happens, when you stroll into a boss room and you realize you don't have any health or you don't have the items you need, good luck with that. Unless you've got some health potions with you at that exact moment, chances are you're just going to let the boss kill you for the sake of respawning with all of your health back. And now listen, okay? Don't be ashamed. We have all done this. We've all done it. At number six, when you get that unlucky checkpoint. Most games try to make their checkpoints in the campaign fair, or at least as fair as they can be. But what happens when you get that completely screwed over checkpoint? This has happened plenty of times in plenty of games, and the classic Halo games are even notorious for having some really awkward checkpoints. When I get a checkpoint in a video game, I want to feel like I'm going to be in a safe spot, a safe zone where I can respawn after dying and get my thoughts together, gather my wits before charging into the fight. I think everybody agrees with that. What I don't want in a checkpoint is to spawn in, walk five feet, and then immediately die again. Some games have a system in place where if you die at that same checkpoint a certain number of times, it will send you back to the previous checkpoint, and that's always a humiliating thing to do. You're not good enough, so we're going to send you back another one. You get a checkpoint so bad that you have to repeatedly kill yourself so you can go back and play another section before that just for the sake of a better checkpoint. That's frustrating. 
This month's giveaway is for a brand new PlayStation 4 console. All you have to do to enter is like the video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on those notifications, and tweet me why you want to win it with your Twitter handle included. Backing into the top five when it's a 1v whatever, three, four, and search and destroy. Search and destroy is one of the most popular game modes in the Call of Duty franchise. It's been around since the very first Call of Duty game. It was expanded upon from new game to new game until it became the version we know and love today. Each time, each team only has one life and must either defend or attack a bomb site and you win the round by either destroying the bomb or killing all the members of the other team. But if you've spent much time playing SD, chances are you've been in this awful situation where you're the only one left on your team and the entire full team is still squatted up on the enemy side and you, you gotta do all the work yourself. Can you clutch it up? Sure you can. And it's hype as hell when you do it, but will you clutch it up? Ah. Probably not, but I'm gonna guess most people here will say that they're not gonna just die. They're gonna go at it and try to get that clutch or that ace. At number four, when your teammates trap you in a corner. Speaking of Call of Duty, let's talk about something that a lot of COD players do because they, they find it funny. It actually is pretty funny. When you see your teammate sitting in the corner, maybe because they're camping or maybe because they're checking their phone, it is hard to resist the urge to run over and stand in front of them so they can't move. Then you just set your controller down and you watch as they jump up and down and over again, desperately trying to get you to move. I mean, if you do this, yeah, you're kind of being a jerk, but it's also kind of funny, so that makes up for it, right? But if you're on the receiving end of this, you just want it to end, and the best way to do that is to drop a trusty frag grenade at your feet so you can respawn and send your teammate an angry message. At number three, dropping into a battle royale game and not getting anything. Battle royales are a ton of fun and they're insanely popular right now, but if you played any of them, you probably know the feeling of dropping into a lobby, not getting a single weapon, and then having to desperately run around and avoid the 20 people around you that all did get weapons. This is one of those situations where you kind of just want to back out so you can start fresh, hit the reset button, and try again. But there's still that feeling of hope in the back of your head that you might be able to stumble upon a gun before you get blasted in the face. But the reality of it is, if you're running around 30 or 40 seconds in with a pickaxe like in Fortnite and you haven't got a gun, you're probably going to die. Speaking of Fortnite, when you royally mess up your build in Fortnite. That's right, let's talk about the worst feeling you can probably have when you're playing this specific game. The building mechanics are part of what makes Fortnite so fun and so unique compared to the other games in the genre. And build fights are a great way for two players to show off their skills. But you can't help but feel like an idiot when you get into a build fight, you're playing super well, you're hitting all your shots, and then all of a sudden, boom! You have a brain fart and you start messing up, whether it be you're building roof caps or you're building ramps instead of walls. It doesn't take long in that scenario for you to realize that it's all over and you can just accept defeat and wait for the other person to put you out of your misery. And uh, finally today, when the boss heals itself. Oh my God, this is so frustrating. I don't know what the first video game was where the boss was able to heal itself or whose amazing idea this was initially. But that mechanic has caused so many gamers so much grief. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You're fighting the boss. You've already died a few times trying to beat him and then you finally get him down to like 10% health and you start getting happy that you're finally going to do it. And then all of a sudden, he backs away and a few seconds later, he's back to full health. Bosses that heal themselves have to be one of the most hated things in video game history, and they have their own place deserving uh, in uh, in uh, well, wherever, somewhere bad. And they, they're more than deserving of the number one spot on this list. Not just healing, okay? What about if you have to fight a boss that has stages to it? Like a boss, you kill him, then he comes back stronger. Then you kill him again, he comes back as two stronger guys. You kill him again, he comes back as a, a mega monster or something like that. Whatever the that is, it's just, it's, it's dumb. And there you have it, my friends. Those are 10 times you would rather just die in a video game. Let me know a specific scenario that fits right with this topic. Let me know the story that you've had where you actually said, you know what, I'm giving up in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And there is a thing on the screen right now to help you turn on those notifications. Ring that little bell, check that little box. Hopefully, you will never miss an upload on the channel again. There's a playlist below with all the other video game top 10s that I have ever done. If you want to go binge out, check them out. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you soon.